Hey you guys, Sarah here. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be, I guess, kinda gonna be different than anything I've ever done. I mean, it kind of is like some of my vlogs, but at the same time, like, I've never fully really focused in on this topic. But today's video is gonna be a what I eat in a day while on quarantine, because I'm defaulted to quarantine right now. If you hear things in the background the animals are eating and drinking right now but like a typical what I eat in a day I'm gonna take you guys through everything that I'm consuming today but I do want to let you guys know that this is like in no means meant to be like some sort of healthy guide I'm not an expert or anything I'm just showing you guys what I eat I also don't really follow a lot of dietary restrictions besides the fact that I just personally for me I don't eat red meat I don't eat beef bison rabbit lamb anything like that i do eat pork so that's why i say i don't eat red meat i know that there's some debate on that as to whether or not that's really red meat and for the most part i do try to practice intermittent fasting right now while in quarantine it just helps to kind of like keep me more in check with what i'm eating so i'm not grazing for long long periods of time and consuming more calories than i need to so if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up let me know to do more like i said this is my first one so if this gets a good reaction i'll try to do these more regularly also leave me comments down below i love chatting with you guys i'm always answering comments right away within like the first hour or so that my video goes up but I still do try to answer each and every single one of you so I'd love to chat with you whether you have questions or just observations or anything like that I'd love to connect with you guys and of course if you are new and you enjoyed this video please consider subscribing just hit the red button down below and turn on your notifications so you get notified of any time I have a new video I do post regularly on Tuesdays Thursdays and Sundays so there's definitely a lot of content coming on my channel that you don't want to miss but for right now let's get started with what I'm eating So technically the first thing that I eat are these Ollie vitamins. This is the Undeniable Beauty. I take two of these every morning and these just help with the quality and strength of your hair, nails, and skin. So next up is my coffee and I do have a Nespresso maker, but the creamer that I like to use is this one from Coffee Mate. This is the Natural Bliss Vanilla Creamer and I like this one just because the ingredients are really simple. It's just got non-fat milk, heavy cream, cane sugar, and natural flavor. So I just like to do a a splash of this and I do put my cream in first so for this morning's coffee I am gonna go for the cafecito de Cuba if you have the bigger Nespresso this is the same as the regular cafe de Cuba they just call this one the cafecito one because it's for the little Inicia so I'm gonna go ahead and pop this guy in and I always do it on the longo setting which is the larger one because I like a full cup of coffee Okay, and coffee is ready. And I usually need to wait a few minutes because I can't handle really, really hot beverages. I'm just too sensitive to it. So I usually let that sit for about like three to five minutes before I start drinking it. But I know that there is some debate as to whether or not coffee with some cream breaks your fast. I've heard arguments of both ways that if you need to do coffee, it should just be black. But then I've heard a lot of other arguments on the other side saying that with just like a splash of cream is fine. Or if you keep your beverage under 50 calories and it's strictly just liquids, then you're fine and you don't break your fast. Obviously with all that conflicting information, there's no definitive answer necessarily. I feel like it doesn't break my fast. I do still feel like I am in a fasted state. And personally, I need coffee in the mornings and I always drink my coffee with cream. I've tried to do it black before. It's just not for me. So I do a little bit of creamer but I don't even use like a full serving amount of creamer it really is just like a little bit so honestly based on how my body feels and everything I feel like I'm fine and I am still in a fasted state but obviously do what feels right and what works for you okay so it's been saying for a little while it's a little bit cooler so cheers that's good Okay, so I just finished a workout and now I'm gonna make my favorite salad of all time. It's like a little salad recipe that I came up with while in quarantine because you know, what else is there to do? So I have showed it on vlogs before, but I'll walk you guys step by step through it again just because it's like literally the best. The key ingredient here is pesto bitch and sauce, but I will show you guys how I put it all together. Here are the ingredients for this salad. First off, just some baby spring mix. I always do this as my base for my salads. I love baby spring mix, it's my favorite. Then we're gonna need some turkey breast. 
I usually prefer to use oven roasted turkey breast, but they only had the maple one in store this last time that I went, so it should be fine though. And then you're gonna need some cherry tomatoes or marzano tomatoes, which I prefer because I feel like these are just a little bit sweeter and more flavorful. Some cucumber, some Parmesan cheese, because if you're new to my channel, I freaking love Parmesan cheese so much. And then I also love to add this Trader Joe's olive tapenade, just like Parmesan. I am obsessed with olives, so I add in so much of this. And then for the dressing, you're gonna need the pesto bitchin' sauce that I mentioned. You can honestly get this at Vons. That's where I get mine. It might be known as Pavilions by you. I know it's known as different things in different regions, but for us, it's Vons or Pavilions. And then you're gonna need some red wine vinegar. This is my favorite brand, the Pompeian brand and then just some extra virgin olive oil. Okay, so starting with the dressing, I'm just gonna take the pesto bitchin' sauce and do a kind of generous amount in here. Then just some red wine vinegar. I usually eyeball this, probably about that's enough. And then just a bit of olive oil to cut the acidity a little bit and just mix it up. And then this will obviously thin out the bitchin' sauce to make it more of like a dressing consistency. But I always just taste it. If it's too tart, I'll add in more olive oil or more bitchin' sauce, just depends on what it needs. And if it doesn't have that like tartness that I want, then I'll obviously add in more vinegar. But So for this one, I'm gonna go with a little bit more bitchin' sauce. Do another scoop in there. And then for the salad, I'm gonna go ahead and cut up any ingredients that need to be chopped up. For me, I usually do like about four or five tomatoes. That's usually a good amount for me. So I'm gonna wash these up. And then I just kind of dice them. Sometimes I just quarter them, but today I'm feeling like I want them just a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna cut them into kind of small pieces about this size. And then the cucumber. I like to use a seedless cucumber personally. Probably about this much should be good for this salad. And then just like the tomatoes, I wanna make them just kind of smaller slices just so that it's a little bit more bite-sized and you know easy to pick up and eat. And then finally the turkey. I'm gonna take about two slices of it and just kind of roll it up and coarsely chop. Okay, so starting on the base of this salad, I'm gonna take a generous amount of greens. Then our dry ingredients. Then the olive tapenade. I'm gonna take a couple of generous scoopfuls of this because like I said, I love olives and this tapenade is actually really delicious. Let me do a little bit more. And then just pour the dressing right over top. And then finally, like a good handful of Parmesan because like I said, I love Parmesan. But that is my salad for lunch. Just a really, really hearty salad. I love it. It's super, super filling. And like I said, that bitchin' pesto sauce makes all the difference with the salad. Okay, then along with my salad, I'm gonna have a little bit of these Mary's Gone crackers. These are the herb crackers. And then the sparkling water from Trader Joe's. I'm obsessed with this, I've talked about this so much, but this is their blueberry lemonade water. It's only here for spring and summer, so get it while you can. It's the best, it'll change your life, I promise. But to help myself out a little bit with the cracker control, I'm gonna put them in this little container just so that I'm not just like snacking out of the bag. And really all I want this is just for a little bit of a crunch. That is one thing that this salad is lacking for me is just like that crunch factor, but it's just one of those where the recipe was just so perfect to me that I don't want to add any croutons or anything like that to it. So here is the little container. A serving size of these is about 12 crackers and this is 
somewhere under 12. So it's definitely within line. So it's about 2.30. Now starts my eating window. So I'm gonna eat, enjoy my lunch, and then I will see you guys back here for snack time. Okay, so it's been a little while since I last checked in with you guys. And honestly, I haven't eaten anything. I'm still so full. That salad was much bigger and heavier than I thought it was gonna be. Either that or my stomach is really adjusting to having salads for lunch, cause like about, I'd say five out of seven days of the week, I have a salad for lunch. So that's actually pretty typical for me. Keep in mind like this, what I eat in the day is like what I'm eating today. Some things are typical, other things aren't. But one thing that I always do is I always drink water. And like I said, I was really, really full from lunch and I normally would have had a snack at about like four, 4.30 and I'm still full. It's about 5.30 right now, so right now I'm not gonna snack. If I start getting really hungry towards dinner time, which will probably be about seven or so, I might have what I had planned as my snack, as like a little appetizer, we'll see. But for right now, all I really wanted was just some water. This is, I believe, a 32 ounce water bottle. No, 35 ounce water bottle. So I try to have at least two of these a day to get 70 ounces in. I usually actually end up doing three of these. Plus then I usually have sparkling water at night with my dinner and stuff. So I just really try to make sure to get my water intake in every day. That's something that I try to be really good about as much as possible. So I'm finally starting to get a little bit hungry and thinking I wanna at least start prepping dinner right now. So I'm gonna preheat the oven to 400 degrees cause I'm gonna make pesto chicken. I've kind of made this on the vlog. Like I showed it and I said what I did, but I'll actually take you guys step by step through it. But I do want to have just like a little snack as I'm putting dinner together. So you yeah, have the snack that I was supposed to do in the afternoon. Okay, so while that oven is preheating, I am gonna have some of this Skinny Pop. This is the sea salt and pepper flavor. This is like my favorite flavor of them. It's so freaking good. Um, so what I'm gonna do though to ensure that I don't go overboard, which I can very easily do, so I'm just gonna take a little bowl and put a little bit in there. Usually I do a full bowl for a snack. I'm not crazy hungry, but I could definitely eat. I'm just gonna fill up the bowl part way, so just to like there, that should be more than enough for me right now. And then I'm gonna have a little bit of my favorite kombucha. This is the GT's Strawberry Lemonade Kombucha. This one is exclusive to Trader Joe's. I did look it up and like this flavor is exclusive. You can only get it there, but it is my favorite. And what's like annoying about it is that not every Trader Joe's carries it. So I'm like, really? Come on. But I'm be a little fancy and do it in a whiskey glass. I only like to have about half the bottle, so well, can definitely do more. Dang, this glass does not fit a lot. Okay, pretty much the brim. So yeah, I just have half of that bottle, which is like a full whiskey glass. Aren't these so cute? One of my maids of honor got us this set. There's a his, and then there's an ours, that's a decanter and she got it for us when we got engaged. So super cute, I love that set so much. But yeah, so while the oven preheats, like as I make my chicken and stuff, this is what I'll be snacking on. All right, so the oven is preheated and I'm ready to cook the chicken. I am just using these from Trader Joe's. These are the frozen chicken thigh meat. I've been raving about these on vlogs. They are seriously the best. And these look huge, but they do cook down quite a bit. So that's what they look like. And you do cook them from frozen. I like to start upside down. That way it finishes on the top. And I'm just gonna like lightly season it. Just like a little sprinkle of garlic salt and then some brown black pepper. You're gonna cook this at 400 degrees for 20 minutes and then we're gonna flip it over, but you do wanna cover it for the first 20 minutes, just like that. So, pop this in. Okay, then 20 minutes is up, and don't mind Spartacus eating in the background. But, ooh, that is hot. Here is the chicken. So I'm gonna flip it over to the other side. 
beautiful. Then we'll season it up on this side. Just a light sprinkle is all you need of salt. And then as much pepper as you want. And since this is a bigger piece, it looks like it's taking longer to cook than they usually do. I'm just gonna put a generous heaping of pesto right on top here. And then this is the Kirkland basil pesto. It's my freaking like one of my favorites. It's my second favorite like store-bought pesto. Then taking some feta, a really weird thing about me, I actually prefer the non-fat feta just cause, and this is gonna sound so weird, it's a little drier. I don't know why, but I, I like that. <laughs> I'm like the same way when it comes to Triscuits, I prefer the fat-free ones just because they are a little bit crunchier and crisper and just drier in general. <laughs> I'm just gonna make sure that the feta is actually on this chicken. It's a big piece, so I'm gonna do a decent amount of feta. There we go. And then I'm gonna leave this uncovered and pop it back in the oven, probably for about 15 minutes. Then I'm gonna hit the broiler on high for five, just to see if I can get a nice brown crust going on this feta. Okay. Chicken is ready to go. Gorgeous. Okay, so here's my carb for tonight. I'm just having some leftover red potatoes. I made these probably a little less than a week ago, so this is probably like the last night that I can use them. But I do this quite often where I'll make big batches of something, then I'll use it in different ways for different meals. But like I said, these are red potatoes. They were oven roasted on high. It was like 450 degrees for like 25 minutes or so because I like mine nice and brown and crisp. And then I tossed it in a little bit of olive oil and avocado oil and then seasoned it with a little bit of garlic salt, some black pepper, and a ton of smoked paprika. And these are seriously so, so good. Like ridiculously good. So the best way that I found to reheat this is just uncovered and I do it for about a minute or so. Oh. <sighs> Trevor didn't clean his rice off. I just didn't want to like microwave it and really just dry that on there. So I'm just going to microwave this uncovered for about a minute. It doesn't make them crispy again, but it does kind of like dry them out a little bit, like in a good way so that they're not soggy. Um, so I'm gonna heat that up. Then for my veggie, since I'm actually still pretty satisfied from that salad, believe it or not, I'm just gonna do a cucumber. So I'm just gonna slice this up into little sticks and have this as my veggie side. And just in case you're wondering, it is a little past 8.30 at night. I'm just eating so late because I was so full from that salad. Usually I eat at about like 7.45 or 8, but like I said, that salad, I just made a much bigger salad than I had thought I did. So I just didn't get hungry for a while. But I do push my eating window kind of late because I ate lunch at like 2.30 or something because I'm just the type I am very productive at night, which isn't like great for sleep, but I'm just very creative at night and I that's when I tend to edit or like plan new videos and stuff like that. So I stay up kind of late. So that's why I do a little bit of a later eating window because I am still active and doing stuff late into the night. But I generally try to stop eating by 9.30 at the very, very latest. So, you know, trying to get my dinner in now. That way I can stop eating by like 9.30. Okay, and here is my dinner. The pesto feta chicken, some fresh cucumber slices, and my leftover smoked paprika roasted potatoes. Oh, and I almost forgot. I am gonna have a bubbly with dinner. It's just like, this weird thing with me, I need to have some kind of flavored beverage with my meals, but I don't really like soda, I don't drink it. I maybe have a ginger ale when my stomach hurts, but sparkling waters have been my replacement, but I really, really love Bubbly. This is definitely my favorite sparkling water brand, and Trevor's too. We love the raspberry. The raspberry is our favorite mutual flavor. And I heard someone talking in the grocery store the other day and they were like saying bubblies aren't good because they have sugar, but I'm gonna show you guys right now. There's no sugars in this. There's nothing in this. This is just as good as LaCroix or any other type. So if you heard that rumor, 
it's not true. But yeah, like I said, this is our favorite mutual flavor. My personal favorite is the new peach ginger, which I'm out of. So the raspberry bubbly will do for today. Okay, so I finished my dinner probably about 20 minutes ago and I wanted to get in a little sweetness dessert thing before 9.30 hit. So I am gonna have this. This is the perfect snacks from like, you know, perfect bars. These are their refrigerated peanut butter cups and the dark chocolate with sea salt. I ate one the other night and now I'm having the other one tonight. I just only need one because this is actually pretty filling for just like one tiny little peanut butter cup. Although I don't know why they call these peanut butter cups because like, look at that. That is not what I would classify as a peanut butter cup. These remind me of like the Reese's Easter eggs, but these are actually super good. I was extremely impressed when I had the first one. So when I go back to the grocery store, I'm definitely gonna get some more because this is honestly just like such a good little protein packed dessert. And this will close out my eating window for the day. I still do have like a couple of things within my nighttime routine that are relevant to this. So I'll show you guys that when we get there. But for right now, I'm just having a little quick dessert. Okay guys, so it's about 11.30 right now. I usually go to bed between midnight and 1 a.m. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my nighttime supplements. These are both Ollie gummy vitamins. I have the sleep one with melatonin and then the stress one. I am a night owl. I do a lot of thinking and overthinking at night. And sometimes it's hard to shut my brain off. So this combo I realized has been the best thing whenever I need to get a good night's sleep or especially if I need to wake up at a certain time in the morning. I notice that when I take these, my sleep quality is just so good that I end up naturally waking up much easier. So the sleep one really helps to calm my body and just like kind of physiologically get me ready for bed while the stress one really helps to quiet my mind. So that combination together just kind of knocks me out once I hit the pillow. So I will take these in just a little bit right before I head upstairs for the night. But before that, I usually like to end off my night with a cup of peppermint tea. I'm not really picky on my peppermint tea. I just kind of get whatever looks good and is maybe on sale. So this brand is Stash. But I love taking peppermint tea at night because it helps with your digestion. So I love this to kind of help my body digest everything I ate throughout the day while I sleep at night. Anyways, that was it for my what I eat in a day. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. It is a first for me. So if you guys would be so kind as to give it a thumbs up, let me know if you guys wanna see more of these or better yet, leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you wanna see these from me more regularly. And if you're new to my channel and you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing. But for right now, I'm gonna curl up with my cup of coffee, watch an episode of Xena, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.